Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. And so we don't uh, just take it for granted that you're tuning in today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there's going to be something that's going to be shared that's going to be a blessing to your life. So we just want to say welcome to everybody. On behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to you. We thank God for you showing up today. And so, like I always say, there are many other platforms you can be on right now, but you're here today. And so I believe that there's going to be a word that's going to be shared, that's going to bless your life, that's going to take you to the, another level and your next place in God. And so I'm just excited about this word today and releasing what I believe that the Spirit of God has laid on my heart to share with you today. And so I want to say, first of all, happy uh, anniversary, Spirit of Fire Fellowship. Yes, we are celebrating our anniversary today. Um, we actually launched our first service uh, here on August the 26th, 2006. And so we thank God for just enduring faith, overcoming faith. Um, and we thank God for those that have been a part of the journey. We thank God for you, for each and every person who's come through our doors, each and every person who's come in and out of our lives. But we, we thank you. We thank you. We appreciate you for the support, for the seed sown for the prayers prayed, for the times that you serve, um, whether you're a current member or not, for everybody that has done anything to add to this vision, we want to say thank you and how much we love you, how much we appreciate you. And so we just want to say happy anniversary, Spirit of Fire Fellowship. Now, this, this is something where, um, as I've been praying, we've had this week of prayer. And to all of our first-time visitors, I want to say welcome. First of all, I want to thank God for you showing up. Um, if this is your first time, we want to acknowledge you and tell you how much we appreciate you tuning in today. And so we want to thank God for you. And we want you to enjoy this word today and sit back and relax and go ahead and get your cup of coffee. Go ahead and get your stuff together. Sit down, get your notebooks, your pads, and get ready to receive the word of God. And so we pray for a life-changing word that will help transform your life. And so as I was, uh, as I was saying, I was uh, just kind of reflecting and I have moments of reflection. I think we all need to do that to reflect where God has brought us from, where he's taken us to, to hear for vision. And so one of the things I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to even share a little bit today now, um, I just want to cast some vision. I just want to share um, some things that are on my heart. But, um, you know, some things I'll share publicly later. Um, but I just want to say, you know, we just thank God. As I begin to reflect when God called us to start this work, um, we were in Atlanta, Georgia, and God was really in the intent and for us going to Atlanta was to sit up under ministry and to sit up under our pastors to receive the word and then to come back and start a church. We knew God always wanted us to start a ministry. And so that was the plan. Once we got there, we kind of got comfortable there. And it was like, no, we just like being here. Um, we love the church. We love, you know, um, we had just um, bought a home up built a home, actually. My wife was in real estate. I was working uh, with a company, and uh, we were just serving in ministry and youth ministry, things of that nature. But God was really working on our hearts to come back. And so one of the things you got to always remember is the why behind why you do what you do. And so, you know, this wasn't a decision we made in and of ourselves, but we submitted to the will of God. And I remember the day when I said, yes, Lord, I'll go back. And I, I tell people this all the time. It was like I literally felt like somebody was pouring liquid peace that hit the top of my head and went throughout my body. And I was at work. And I remember picking up the phone and calling my wife and saying, we got to go back. And she said, simply, I know. So we endeavored and we would travel back and forth, uh, even as we were transitioning from Atlanta um, to Richmond. And I mean, we would get... And I worked at a job where I had to work till completion, till all the work was done. So I didn't necessarily know a particular time that I would get off. Sometimes I get off earlier, sometimes a lot later. And we, my wife would come pick me up from work with the children, you know, in the back with the car loaded and us ready to hit the road to come to Richmond. I mean, I would leave the time straight from work. We hit the road and we'd get ourselves together, grab something to eat or whatever. And we'd hit the road coming to Richmond driving back and forth every weekend for several months. That's right, for several months. I think it was up from that time, it was probably from August 
to actually December, um, the end of November, beginning of December, around that time when my family moved here. Um, and it was just one of those things. Everything was shutting down in Atlanta. Certain things weren't working. We ended up having to leave. And I think people always need to hear sometimes that full testimony, where it's because it wasn't that everything was flourishing. Things were working at a point, but then all of a sudden it began to shut down. And it was almost like we were being birthed out of that place into where we were supposed to be, where even I had a friend of mine who was one of our board members um, at the time. And he was like, man, he's like, you're supposed to go back to Richmond. I was like, yeah, I know. And, and so we were trying to make it work. But God was like, no, I have something for you in Richmond. What the, the deposit that I put in you here, I need for you to take back there. And so God ordained us. God called us. We weren't went ones. We were sent ones. And so even the favor, when we submitted to the leadership and we were released and say, OK, go back and do what God called you to do and to see God's faithfulness and things. And, you know, um, th this is going to tie into this message today. And so I'm telling this story and just going through the things of having the first service at Thompson Middle School and um, family and friends showing up, you know, and just seeing, you know, as people, God begin to bring people in. Man, I preach my heart out and we'll hit the road and go back. You know, we'll come and have a Saturday night service. I think it was at six o'clock at that time. Then we'll go to sleep, get up early Sunday morning, hit the road, go back to Atlanta because the children had to go to school. I had to go to work. My wife had to do her work um, in real estate. So it was it was hectic. It was a lot. And I remember one time driving back to Atlanta and it was like, man, that's like a nine hour drive the way that we had to go from where we had to come from. And so that, I'm talking about nine hours both ways. And so I was like, God, how do we do this? And it was like we were going back to visit one time. And all I simply heard was, you were grace for it. You were grace for it. I mean, the children, I mean, were awesome. They, it'll be like road trip. They have their blankets and their pillows, and we'll be driving all night and arriving here like three and four in the morning and resting and then having to get up. And that's a lot. That's a lot for a family to do that. That's enough for a person by themselves, let alone a family of five doing that. And John Michael, uh, uh, my youngest, he was two at the time, I believe. And so, I mean, and the girl's about seven at that time. And uh, he might have been younger than that. I don't know. I think they may have been younger than that, like uh, one and six, something like up in that area. And so we were going back and forth. And then it was like, OK, the, the family needed to stay here. But I was traveling back and forth for about two weeks. Um, and I just remember the faithfulness of God. And I remember going back and I remember it was Christmas Day. We came and we were celebrating Christmas here. I think Christmas was on a Sunday at that time. And I remember getting back, well, it may have been on a Saturday. I think it was a Sunday, though. And I remember it was snowing. I remember leaving my family and seeing my children at the door because we were staying um, at my mom's house. And it was like, because we just had to go back and forth. And I remember tears coming down my eyes. And I'm like, God, I can't keep doing this. It's like, you got to make a way. But I knew I still had to provide, so and I still wanted to walk in integrity. And I told the people, and I gave them a two-week notice. I wanted to to be a person of integrity. And you no, know, at that time I didn't even have a job. And I remember coming back. This was Christmas. I remember I had a vacation time that I set up for the first week in January. And I said, I'm going, and I'm going to find me a job in Richmond. And I was like, I ain't coming back without a job. And I remember, and I was staying at a friend's house. Um, in Georgia at that time. And he and his wife and family allowed me to stay in their home um, until I was able to move back to Richmond. But I knew I needed to provide for my family. And see, these are the things sometimes people don't hear. They don't always see if they don't know it unless we tell it. And I remember just the, the favor of God, because wherever God guides, he provides. And wherever he leads, his favor is there for you. And so we came back, I came back, ran into an old coworker, went to a job I used to work at here in Richmond. The person, I happened to, I happened to run into somebody. While I was at the front desk, somebody else came out. They told me about a position that was available. I went, that week I got the job. Not only did I get the job right then and there on the spot, but God also brought increase. And I got $5,000 more a year than I was making in Atlanta. And I was like, God, this is you. 
And so we've seen God, we've seen landmarks of faith from the time we did that and not knowing. And even before that, God showing up and providing and granting provision for us to show us he was with us. And so, and I'm sharing this for a reason, because some of you have had landmarks like this in your life where you knew it was God. You knew he was with you all along in doing what he told you to do because you saw his faithfulness. You saw his provision. But something may have gotten off along the way. And maybe you haven't wound up at the place that you thought that you should be at this stage in your life. I got a word for you today. So this will be a word that's going to encourage you. This is a prophetic teaching word, a prophetic teaching moment today that I believe that even with this, this, um, this anniversary, that God wants me to begin to even recast some vision um, for the ministry to show you where we're headed and where we're going and what we're going to believe for. And so not only will this be for his house, but this is going to be for your house as well, where he'll begin to show you what you need to do to now cross over that Jordan into your promised land. And so what we're going to do today and just seeing the goodness of God, even when we went into our first building and things of that nature and begin to see on Turner Road and we were at different schools. And I remember Reed Elementary School and then we went to Turner Road. And, and when we hit Turner Road, that's when a growth spurt hit. It was an excitement. It was an energy. It wasn't but a handful of people. But it was like, man, we had to knock down a wall and, and we begin to grow and we begin to see God's faithfulness. And now all of a sudden, then there was moments of there was a dip here and a dip there. And we begin to see some changes in ministry. But I always knew God said this. And I remember that the spirit of God said, go teach my people who they are. And so now that call still remains. And he says, wherever I got, I'm going to provide. And that call, listen, the Bible says that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. That means when he tells you to do something, if he's equipped you to do something, he has not changed his mind about it. Sometimes we change our minds because of the adversities of life and, and the things that we go through and the attacks that hit us. But I'm here to tell you today, man, I got a word for you. And I'm going to help you along this line. So I'm going to start a, a new mini series. But before I tell you what it's about, <laughs> I want us to have a word of prayer because we're going to celebrate not only what God has done, which will pale in comparison to what's about to take place and what's about to happen in your life, in this ministry. And I'm telling you now, the best is still yet to come for you. The best is still yet to come for us. Now watch this. I want us to go ahead and have a word of prayer. And we're going to get into it today. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation, knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven. Yeah, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge and good understanding of the word of God. We do, approach, we do approach your holy written word reverently. We thank you right now, Father, and we covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. We thank you that every ear is anointed to hear the word. Every heart is open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, glory to God, which is able to save our souls. We thank you, Father, for refreshing. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for recovery. We thank you for reinventing. We thank you, Father, for new ideas, witty inventions and concepts that you're doing to glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for healing of your people from healing from negative emotions, healing from past trauma. Yeah. Father, we thank you for it. We thank you for healing, healing to hear right today, healing to receive right today. And so we thank you, Father, that our spirits are unclogged, our thought patterns are unclogged, that we are free to receive everything that you have for us, every bit of advice, every bit of wisdom, every bit of direction that you're telling us to do. We will hear and we will obey. Father, we give you glory for it. 
We give you praise for strength. I thank you for the anointing of the prophet and the anointing of the teacher. I thank you right now for it to be an operation and demonstration at a high level. Thank you, Father, right now that even as a master builder, a wise, skilled builder, thank you, Father, that my tongue is the pen of a ready writer, ready to document upon the hearts of your people. So I thank you for answers that are being released right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for strength that's being released for your people right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for encouragement. And Father, I even ask for the gift of faith to be an operation and demonstration to assist and to help your people believe for things like never before to get the job done. We bless you. We thank you for these 16 years, Father. You are a faithful God. Your, your plan and your purpose for us has not changed. We thank you right now for divine direction and instruction and movement the promptings and the leadings of you, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you as the guide, as the teacher, as the comforter, ready to give us peace. Father, we bless you. And we thank you for it now. In the mighty name of Jesus and everybody in agreement, say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to start here in the book of 1 Samuel. Um, I was in... um. It's something how God leads you and guides you and directs you with things. Um, I've been dealing with the grace of God. Then, I, you know, we came out of the upgrade, talked about the grace of God. I'm still not finished with God's grace. I'm going to do a lot more teaching on it. Um, but there are pockets and times if I feel a shift that I need to address some other things, then I'm going to go. And then I'll be referring back to some areas that I've been talking about. But I really felt like with this anniversary and that is contemplation, and even in conversation, that this was just something that just dropped in my heart to talk about today. And it's kind of like a twofold type of thing. So I'm going to start with this. I want to go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'm going to, I'm going to go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I'm going to start reading verses 1 through 8, and then we're going to drop down to verses 18 and 19. This is about David. David goes, comes from battle. And let me just begin to read. And it says, and it came to pass, verse one, that David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Now, now just look at that. There was no more power. Listen, you crying to the point where you are so spent after you're crying, you can't even cry anymore. That, that type of anguish, that type of hurt, that type of disappointment, that type of loss. And David, verse 5, and David's two wives were taken captives, uh, uh, Hinoam and the, um, the, Jezreelite, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite, and David was greatly distressed. He was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in, his, um, in the Lord his God. Now, you got to hear this. David's in battle with them. They're all in the same boat together. Just, that, just like they lost, David lost. David suffered loss the same way. He was greatly distressed. He was, he was upset. He was hurt. He had gone through this thing. He's out in battle. He comes back, sees that his, um, his wives and his sons and all this stuff is gone. Now watch this. And, and then, it's, then the people turned on him. That was with him. The people turned on him. It's like, man, how can... It's almost like when, when people are hurt, they have a tendency. It's like hurt people hurt people. They have a tendency to hurt the one sometimes closest to them that's going through the same thing that they're going through. 
And so sometimes it's like, because you're so angry, you don't know where to direct your anger. So you just take it out on the person nearest to you. And that's what's happening in people's lives because it can be with couples. It can be with families, you know, um, parents and children. And the same way that the parents went through a, a, a situation, the children went through the same situation. I thought about that with my children, our children. Listen, they were with us in the beginning. They were traveling back and forth. They've experienced people coming in and out of our lives. People that they've seen us behind closed doors minister to them. And the same people that you minister to and give your life for are the same people that can turn on you and talk about you and never even acknowledge that they talked about you and act like they never did anything. And then you still got to stand up in integrity and in love and minister to them. And that can be traumatic. If you don't have God on your side, if you ain't grace for this, Listen, I'm telling you, you can lose your mind, lose your sanity, and sometimes you feel like you're ready to lose your religion. But what I mean by that is like, hey, I want to do to you what you did to me. But then you got to hold your integrity. And you got to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. Because sometimes there ain't people around you to pump you up. And you got to know how to tap in on the inside, on the inward man, and begin to encourage yourself, just like David did. Because everybody he was in battle with turned on him. And the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And David said to um, Abiathar the priest, uh, Ahimelech's son, he says, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. So David getting ready to go into worship. David knows what he needs to do. That representation of the ephod. He's like, okay, I'm putting on my worship garments. I'm going to go now before my God and I'm going to worship God. And so they brought the ephod to David and David inquired at the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Then it says down in verses 18 and 19. And so if you look at it and read the rest of it. So now you got to hear this first. You got to hear this first before I even go to 18 and 19. David gets in the presence of God and inquires of the Lord. He encourages himself. He says, I know what I need to do. I need to hear from God about this situation. I don't know what to do. I'm distressed. My mind can be all over the place. There's this thing coming at me and that thing coming at me. And that's the same way with us. This thing hits. Then something hits you physically. Then something hits you financially. Then something hits your family. Something hits your children. Something hits your marriage. Something hits your mind. And all of this stuff hits. And all of a sudden, you find yourself at a distressed place. And God is saying this. I'm giving you a formula. David says, first, let me get in the presence of God so I can hear. And he goes and asks God, listen, I need your help, Lord. Show me what to do. And he says this, and he quiet. He did not move impulsively. He did not move by his emotions. He stopped so that he can get the wisdom of God to assess the situation and to hear. Because he knew, David knew, David was a worshiper. David knew, if I can get a word from God, then I know it's guaranteed victory. If I get God's wisdom, then I'll know what to do. If I get God's wisdom, I know I got his backing. If I get God's wisdom, I got his grace on me to get it done. If I get God's wisdom, one word from God can transform everything. And then he asks this question. Shall I pursue after this truth? But not only pursue, shall I overtake him? Not only should I go into the fight, but am I going to win? And he answered and said, pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. That's the word that David went out on. He heard pursue. And without fail, you're going to recover everything. Whatever has been lost, damaged, or destroyed, you are going to recover. Let's go to verse 18. Now, during this, as they go, they find this guy who his enemy, who David's enemies had left him after they went into battle. They turned on him and left him for dead. 
David and his, his men came and they fed him. They took care of him. And they was like, what happened? And he told them. So David knew this dude is with the guys. He was with the guys that came and took our stuff. So he says, OK, where can I find him? See, God had a plan. He had somebody already there to show David where he needed to go and where he could find his family and his stuff. Just, ooh, just like God might lead you to somebody that will be your connection and your bridge to your new season and to your recovery process. Because what we're going to talk about now for the next couple of weeks is we're going to talk about the recovery. That you will recover all if you hear from God and you obey what he tells you to do. He said, okay, you better hear, you better, boy, you better get ready. Because what I'm going to deal with and let's, let's, let's read here. He says, and David recovered all, verse 18, and David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives, and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. David got in the presence of God, he heard a word from God, and then he acted on the word that he received, and David recovered, and God's word that was spoken, the rhema word of God, that spoken word directly from God about David, about his specific situation that he was going on, and David recovered all. Now, I, I wanted to get that out first. In this first installment of your recovery, this is something that just began to hit me. Is people need to hear from God to recover. People have questions. It's like, God, how do I know God is speaking to me? How do I find to my ear? Because I know if I get the direction, I know the recovery can take place, but I need God's assistance in this. Because for some of you, you're in uncharted territory. You in uncharted waters. You have never come this way before. You've always been used to trauma, but you've never really fully recovered or fully come back to the pain that you endured. And God is saying, this is your recovery time. For some of you, it may be a thing where, and it was like, okay, this will be for some that, that's recovering. This will be for some that's at a starting point. And you need to know, God, where do I go from here? I know what you told me then, and maybe things didn't work out the way that I intended them to work out. Maybe I didn't fully obey what you told me to do. And because of that, now I'm in distress. Now I'm in a place where, God, I've lost things. I've lost opportunities. I've lost people in my life. I've lost resources. I've lost jobs. I've lost stuff. And God is saying this, I want to restore to you that the years have taken away from you. I want to restore you, watch this, I want to restore the joy of your salvation so that now this time around, you're going to get what God told you, you should have already gotten. And what God, okay, I don't want to get ahead, but what God is getting ready to do for many of you, he's getting ready to push you out your comfort zone and you're going to be led by the spirit of God to go into uncharted territory. And it's going to be like Peter's situations where he's, you're going to be like, God, if this is you, bid me to come. And he's going to tell you directly, this is me, come. This is me. Go in this direction and you're going to start now walking on things that you used to drown in. You're going to start walking over them now and you're going to start walking in the new territory. Some of you done already started it, but God is saying this. I need for you to begin to fine tune your ear to hear me now. And we're going to talk about this today. How can I be led by the spirit of God? How can I hear God? How can I know he's taking me in this direction? Because just like David, one word from God can totally transform everything. And he recovered. Watch this. As you, and if you keep reading, not only did he recover his stuff, but he had the spoils of his enemy as well. The stuff they already had, he took that too. The Bible declares if a thief be found, if the thief is found in Proverbs, he says, watch this, he has to return to you seven times what he took. And you got to say, wait a minute, 
I'm ready for my sevenfold recompense. I done been through too much hell. I done been through too much stuff. I have stayed here. I've said, God, I'm not moving off this thing. And now I'm expecting to see the goodness of God in the land of the, the living. I ain't waiting for the sweet by and by. I ain't waiting to get to heaven to get my stuff. I'm ready to receive everything right now. And I don't care what has happened. God can help you redeem the time by even redeeming deeming the relationships that have been damaged, lost, or destroyed. God will put people in your life to help you to recover. Now watch this. Let's, let's, let's dig into this now. <laughs> Somebody type in for me, recover all. Recover all. Recover all. Recover all. Lord Jesus, I feel something rising up in me now. I feel an unction rising up in me. See, I... I got to say bold stuff. I got to bring it out from my, I got to bring it from the spirit into the natural. I got to speak it into existence. I got to say it. It's like bold stuff. Like God will replace not only what you lost, but greater. Greater than what you lost. Better than what's been taken from you. <laughs> you better hear me now. Better. This is why God says, I want you to do better. I want you to be better. I want you to have better. But I need you to believe for better. I need for you to step out and expand and increase your capacity and your thinking process to handle better. That means this time around, this season in your life, you got to have new structures, new ideas, new ways of doing things. You can't expect a new season with old habits. This is the new season. This is the shifting of the Lord. This is your time of recompense. But in your time of recompense, you got to have new ways of doing certain things so that you can have that new season. And I hope, I hope, okay, I'm going to dig into it a little bit more. Now, let, 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 me, let me go back to this. Let me go back to this. To, to, to lead is simply to be guided. It, it's like by definition is to show, is to, to guide or conduct by showing the way. It's like, this is the way walk in it. it it's to be, it's, it's like a conductor conducting an orchestra. You conduct it, you show where this needs to come in and where that needs to come in and where you gotta do this and you gotta do that. And so you can't, you can't violate, well, let me, let me get rid of share. I was gonna say you can't violate the process that you gotta go through. Because some of you wanted to just happen, but God is saying, no, I have to develop you while you're going, going through, you're growing through. And so when now, when the new opportunity comes around, you have to have new systems and structures and mindsets in place to handle what it is that I'm telling you to do. Amen. Now, um, Oh uh, man. Okay, let me let me do this. Let me do this. Romans 8. Let me let me let me let me let me say it like this. I know I talked and we talked last night. I know I talked to my daughter. We had a conversation and she was like, she was okay with me sharing some things. I'm not going to share everything. But we had a very good conversation. And one of the things is I was just kind of giving her some wisdom and sharing some things and she came and shared something with me. And then it was like, okay, I apologize for saying it a particular way. But it's like, no, this is what I'm trying to get across to you about what it is. And I was just talking about life and things and and her flourishing and her craft and where she's going and what God is calling her to do. And one of the things I had to explain to her is when you are now, uh, when you get into the area of self-employment versus being an employee working with a company, there's a different level in work ethic and faith level that you have to have to handle that because you don't have the comfort of working for somebody that takes care of all of the stuff that you have to take care of now. And so even as I was sharing, I was giving wisdom as to how to structure and how to help with some things and how to do this and how to flow. But this is one of those things that I said, OK, one of the first things was and we were talking about even this subject. I said it was very interesting 
when I told her what I was going to be talking about because she's over our media. So I was like, okay, these are some things I was going over, some of the stuff, I sent her my notes and all of this stuff. And so like, man, this is what I really wanted to hear myself. I was like, yeah, it just, it hit me so strong at that moment. It was like, you need to talk about this and to help people from the point of where they are now. Where do I go from here? Because you can spend a lot of time grieving and regretting past mistakes and failures, but that's not going to add to your statue where you are now. Time is of the essence, and you need to, need to know how to maximize your time, your energy, and your resources at this stage now. You need to maximize your time, your energy, and your resources. So whereas, depending on what stage of life, because when God gives you a word, that word will be tailor-made for you and where you currently are. Because where you currently are may be different from where someone else is. So you got to hear God for your tailor-made plan. You got to hear from him as to where you need to go from here. You got to, you got to know where you need to go. So even, um, and I'm, I'm going to give an example. I'm going to give an example. So I'm going to start giving an example while I'm going to teach you this stuff. As I was praying, I was praying over the ministry, and I had already, we had done a, a video about vision, vision casting. We put it out, and I mentioned to you in that video, even this week while we were praying, I, re, I don't know if any of you took note of it. I changed. At first, I said I was believing, and we were believing, started declaring 10,000 active adult uh, members worldwide, members and partners worldwide, okay? As I was um, sitting down going through prayer, it was like all of a sudden I wanted to increase that number. So I began to declare 100,000 worldwide to declare and to decree. I believe that the Spirit of God took me back to something that he told me about earlier, and it was something about this number 300. It was like, I want you to go ahead and believe for the 300. It's almost like Gideon's army. Gideon brought him down to 300. It was like he had all these soldiers, and God said, you got too many. Bring it down. That's too many. Bring it down and bring it down. But it was like, okay, it's like, what is, who, is, who are these 300? The 300 are the core that's going to assist you and help you in getting the vision accomplished while you're building to the greater number. It was like, I want you to first release your faith for 300 new people to come in and connect. For 300, that's going to be the core of this ministry to get this thing accomplished and done. And even in the video that we did, um, we talked about even the way that we could accomplish it. We talked about the small groups and having, what was it, uh, 25 groups and 12 people in each group equal 300 people. So it was like he was given a level of strategy, but also saying, I want you to begin to now believe for it. But I believe he wanted me to share it again publicly to say, OK, have the people come into agreement with you concerning this. This is going to be important because what I begin to share is uh, uh, Lex and I were talking. I begin to talk and say, now, now this is interesting, though. I just begin to talk about plans and how you need to plan and map out. Because a goal without a plan is just a dream. And so whatever gets planned gets done. Whatever gets scheduled gets accomplished. And so sometimes you have to actively pursue, because that's the word God gave to David, pursue. Go after it. Now, one thing you got to say is this. When you pursue something, you run after it. It's like, now, now the Strong's Concordance and definition said the primitive root of this word is run after something with hostile intent. It's like you, you chase it down. You go after that thing. What is it that God is leading you to do? You're going to have to have a level of pursuit. You might call it ambition. You might be called it being purpose driven. That when God speaks, I have to pursue what he told me to do. And so that means now my thinking faculties get involved. 
not only from my spirit, but from my brain. He gave me wisdom and common sense to know how to begin to say, what are the things, the practical things that I can do to pursue what he's telling me to do? And so God wants you to tap into that. Now watch this. The Bible declares this. I'll, I, I'll just read this real quick in Romans 8, 14 through 16, out of the Amplified Version. It says this. It says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once again or once more in bondage to fear, but you have received, <clears throat> excuse me, the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father, Father, the spirit himself thus testified together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are the children of God. Now watch this. In John 16, John chapter 16, verse 13, in the Amplified Classic, he re it reads like this. But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole full truth. For he will not speak of his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the father. He will give the message that has been given to him and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. So the Holy Spirit who's connected to God, who knows everything there is to know about God with the Father and the Son, he, he now abides in your born again human spirit who knows everything there is to know about you. And so just like Jesus said, I don't say anything unless the Father told me to say it. So when the Holy Spirit, watch this, gives you a directive, it is coming straight from the Father. This is why we say God said to us, but he said it to us by the person of the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is telling us, do this. And that's why you got to have now relationship with him and now talk to him. And now just like he's a person, because he is a person, the third person of the Godhead who has a personality. You can grieve the Holy Spirit or annoy him. And one of the things we want to do is be sensitive to him so that when he gives us a message from the Father, that we take it as from God and begin to implement it in our lives because he'll show us things to come. He'll show us what's getting ready to come ahead so that we can make the proper adjustments to do what we got to do. Holy Spirit told me, shut down um, the way we were doing ministry. And it began to stop having services in person at one point, right before the pandemic. Had no clue what was about to hit, but I knew what he was telling me to do. Now, watch this, as my wife and I are talking, it was like, okay, we already knew we needed to start coming back in person more. We've been doing this virtual thing for a minute, but God is leading and saying, okay, there needs to be now more consistent in-person time coming back. So the way the strategy that we started is and that we're doing now is we're doing it twice a month. And so now I'll go ahead and make this announcement while I'm here in the middle of this. So, and I'll make it again, just to remind you. So on September the 4th, the first Sunday, and then September the 18th, the third Sunday, we will be in person at the Arts Community Center. But then we'll start doing in person more frequently on a weekly basis. But we're starting this to build the momentum that we need to get back into the rhythm and the flow of what he told us to do. Now, this is the thing. God gives us wisdom. God always gives us wisdom when we ask. Because when we ask, even in James um, 2, he said, James 1, is if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally and abradeth not, but let him ask in faith nothing waver. Because if you don't believe that you receive the wisdom when you ask, then you'll be that person who's double-minded and unstable in all their ways. And the Bible says, let not that man think he shall receive anything from God. Because one minute you got this way of thinking about it. Next minute you got this way of thinking about it. And one of the things you may need to do when you begin to hear things from God is to begin to write them down so that you don't lose because paper never forgets or put it in your phone or whatever so that you can be solid because now the word of God turns into a word from God. And so when you hear from God, you need to make sure that you keep it before you 
so that now you can walk it out and don't forget and stay the course of what he told you to do. That's going to be vitally important because God is not necessarily obligated to repeat himself, but he wants to give you instruction to get the job done. Now watch this. I want to, I want to, I want to read something else to you because I haven't even gotten to the points just yet. He says in Isaiah 48, 15 through 17, um, Isaiah 48, 15 through 17. I'm still in the Amplified Classic. It says, I even I have foretold it. Yes, I have called him Cyrus. I have brought him and the Lord shall make his way prosperous. Come near to me and listen to this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it happened, I was there. And now the Lord God has sent his spirit in and with me. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, watch this, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way that you should go. So everybody, the Holy Spirit will begin to lead us. He'll begin to direct us. He'll begin to say, I want you to do this first and then do that second, and then do this third. Sometimes he gives you portions of the plan. Sometimes he gives you only the first part of the plan. And now this is why it's a faith walk, because as he begins to lead, guide, and direct, you have to now obey. Don't be so concerned about what's the next step if you haven't even obeyed the first step. And he says, get the first thing done. And even from a natural standpoint out of his word, he says, write the vision, make it plain, so that those that read it can run with it. That means you can run with it or people that God sends to help you can run with it. You need to have your vision down. You need to have it on paper. You need to have a point of reference that keeps you because even remember, even I think it's in Hebrews, it calls the word of God an anchor to your soul. So when God, not only the written word, but also the rhema or the spoken word, when God gives you that spoken word and you know it's from him, it'll keep you anchored in what you need to do until he gives you further instruction. So if he has not given you further instruction, just do the last thing that he told you to do until you get further instruction or from a practical standpoint, what are the natural practical things that I can do that won't hurt, damage, or destroy my progress or the process just from a natural standpoint, I can do X, Y, Z. So when you're doing that, this helps you keep forward motion and movement, and yet at the same time, that it, it protects you from injury when, you, when you're following God. I hope that made some sense to you. I, I'm going to go back and kind of clean it up a little bit more. Now watch this. Because God is going to lead you. He's going to teach you to profit. When you talk about profit, that means you have more left over than what you started with. After the transaction is completed, whatever you have left over, after everything's been spent, everything's been done, is your profit. And he always wants us to profit. He always wants us to increase. God is a God of increase. He wants us to grow. He wants us to expand. He wants us to inhabit and to rebuild, subdue, replenish, to have dominion over the earth. He wants us to dominate. So he'll lead you in the way that you're to go. Now, verse, uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7, still in the Amplified Classic. He says, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart. All your heart, be confident with all your heart and mind, and do not relate or do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, acknowledge, recognize, and acknowledge Him, and He will direct and make straight and plain your path. Straight and plain, straight and plain. God ain't that complicated with you when He gives you instruction. A lot of times, it's the simplest instructions that He'll give us that produce and that yield tremendous results. It's the simplicity of that thing. Keep it simple. Write the vision. Make it plain. I think another translation is like, so that people who run by hastily, who quickly come by, can identify what it is that you're doing. What's your vision? How quickly can I identify with it? Because people will now take, especially in this day and age, people's attention span is different than it used to be. It's, it's quicker. It's faster. We're moving at the speed of light, the speed of sound, the speed of a, a three-minute caption or a one-minute caption. Where it's like, okay, quickly sharing a word that can now deposit. What is it that you're doing? What is it? God says, go teach my people who they are. So with that is their identity. 
So now wrapped in that is your identity as to who you are in Christ, which will now cause you to start walking out your ways in Christ or ways as the believer and how you function. And then you'll reveal to yourself, to the world, the sons of God. Once you realize who you are, you will start functioning as who you are. You will start manifesting as who you are, which will now reveal who you are. Okay. So now just that simple statement. We'll go, we're, we're called to go teach God's people who they are. Now, within that is wrapped up so much more. Okay? And you can, so whatever it is God is telling you to do, simplify it. How can I simplify it? So that I, 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 I can keep it before me. It could be something as simple as turn it into a picture. Put it up on your wall. Put it up before you. Put it on your desk. Put it on your, your screen. Say, whatever you got to do to keep it before your eyes. So that now you remind yourself of what God told you to do. When the word of the Lord was spoken to me years ago, God gave me this. I think it was the first real prophetic, like extensive, extensive prophetic word that I'd ever received at 16 years old. And this guy prophesied over my life as to how God was going to lead me, guide me and direct me. What he was going to do in my life. And I'm telling you, everything has come to pass. But why? Because I did what Paul told Timothy. I don't know the second Timothy or first Timothy, I think it's second Timothy, when he talked about what, whatever has been deposited in you through the land on the hands of the presbytery, he says, I want you to give yourself completely to it. I, wanna, I want you to give yourself totally to it. Question is, have you given yourself totally to what God told you to do? Or are you doing it part way? See, you got to give yourself wholly to it completely. So what I did was, I began to write that thing down. I began to listen to it. I listened to it over and over again. I got it in my spirit. I could quote the whole prophecy verbatim. And so I treated that rhema word just like the written word. I meditated on it and everything that God spoke came to pass. It wasn't just because it was spoken. It was how I treated what was spoken. How do you treat the word that's spoken to you? Do you take it as yours? Do you meditate on it? Do you give yourself totally to it? So now you can't blame God when you part way obeyed what he told you to do. He says, I told you to do X, Y, Z. But you didn't follow through with it. So now watch this. When David heard recover, pursue and recover. Listen, David hightailed it and did what God told him to do. He didn't waste time. So you can't waste time in doing it. Now watch this. He says, watch this. In all your ways, acknowledge. He says, recognize, acknowledge, and he will direct and make straight and plain your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. So we see that having even the fear of the Lord will help in receiving direction from him. How do you honor God? See, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You got to first submit and honor him. And that fear means to have such a reverence and honor for him. That now that honor for him will push you to do what you got to do. And say, no, God told me to do this. I'm going to do it. Now watch this. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, okay. I think it's in John 10 when he talks about that my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger they won't follow. I want you to write this down just for your own reference. I want you to write down John 10, 1 through 15, John chapter 10, verses 1 through 15, and then verse 27. Just write it down. I want you to go back and study that in, in your own time because I want to jump into this real quick. The Lord's sheep, watch this, hear his voice. And it's the shepherd's job to help the sheep stay on track and understand what the master is saying. So it's part of my job to help you stay on track to say, okay, what is the Lord showing you? I don't know. I don't know if I'm hearing from God. How do I hear from God? Okay, here we go. Number one, first way you hear from God is through his word. I know I set up, I took all that time to set it up to get to this. Number one way is his word. First John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, talking about Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The book of Joshua, one and eight. I'm, 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 I'm rolling here. Uh, you may have to go back and listen to this again. Joshua one and eight. 
This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That means you got to keep talking it. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. To meditate, to ponder it, to roll it over, to think about it, to consider it, to talk to yourself about it. This is one of the things I was talking about the other night. Um, and it's like when you begin, when you sit down and you're making confessions of your faith, sometimes if I'm going through a confession book and I'm speaking my confessions, I don't always just rush through them. You know, I am the body of Christ. Satan has no power over me. If I overcome evil, we're good. I am a God and have overcome Satan for greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. No, sometimes you got to slow it down. If all you do is get to that one scripture and you milk that scripture, I am the body of Christ. Wait a minute. I'm a part of his body. And Satan has no power over me. So that means anything that he brings to me, I have victory already over it. He has no power over me. For I overcome evil with good. I am of God and not of Satan. For greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Wait a minute. The greater one abides in me. So I don't have to be afraid of any demonic force that comes my way. Why? Because I got the greater in me. The greater one abides in me. Why should I be afraid? Why should I then just tuck tail and run? Oh, uh, the Bible says, submit myself to God, resist the devil, and he has to flee from me. So I'm going to walk in authority. So when thoughts come to my mind of defeat, of failure, of death, of, of, of no success, and it's like, no, you're going to always be in this situation, so you might as well get used to it. Heck no. Uh-uh. God says this. Then listen, I'm the lender and not the borrower. I've been designed and created by God to have the resources needed to lend to many nations and not borrow. Do you know what type of resources that takes to lend to many nations? Do you realize the power and the influence that takes? So what does that do when I meditate like that? When I take time, not rushing through it to say I fulfill my daily quota of spending time with God. You ain't spend no real time with God. You did it to make it to appease your conscience versus I'm a dig in this because I got to get in the word of God until I hear a word from God. And as you quoting stuff like this, that's when stuff comes up. I want you to do this. Write this down. An idea comes. Because remember, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established, but then God will lighten up your pathway. In other words, he's going to show you how to get to what you're confessing. But once he shows you, you got to capture it. It can come in the form of a thought. You know what I was thinking? Man, this, this idea keeps coming back to me. Write it down. Research it. It's going to take your faith plus your work to get it done. You can't be lazy in this season. To change your whole, your schedule is going to have to change. You, you, you like the image of success, but the price tag that goes with it. When God tell you to get up early, stay up late, get some rest, exercise. You better stop looking at TV. You can't binge watch the way you used to. So instead of binge watching, why don't you open up the book and read or look up a video that's going to feed you in the area you're trying to grow in. And so, okay, you got to do first things first, work, then play. Whatever it is you got to do, get it done. See, it, it, see when he starts revealing this stuff, now the question is, do you want to obey? But what I want to talk about is just how to position for you to hear. Now, what you do after that, and see, that's my time. Now, I don't know if I'm a, I'm going I'm to keep going just for a second, just for a quick second. So when you meditate, watch this. He says, meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. The Amplified says you will deal wisely in the affairs of life. There's wisdom. In other words, meditation opens up your heart to hear. In, in Psalm 119, 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. See, it's a lamp and a light. It shows you the way. Some stuff you ain't got to pray for. You just read and do what you're reading. It's like scripture says, for a young man, don't you go to no harlot's house. 
In other words, modern day vernacular, don't go by no person who's functioning as a whore. I'm trying to say it a different way. But somebody that's loose and promiscuous, don't even go by her door because she'll snatch you in. She'll seduce you with the words of her mouth. And before you know it, you want to live right. Before you know it, she done seduced you. Now you in the bed with her. Now you feel condemned because now you just got out of the will of God and the way of God. God said, don't even go near it. He said, flee you for lust. Get out of there. Oh, I can handle it. No, you can't. Just basic wisdom. Basic wisdom. Things like Proverbs says, don't even give yourself surety for a neighbor. Don't co-sign for them because now you take on their responsibility. So if they mess up, now you got that responsibility. Now you mad at them and they don't want to talk to you because they know they ain't handle business well and they all this stuff. Now you could avoid it all of that if you just didn't do it. Scripture tells us this stuff. So that's why the word is the first place. Bible calls it a more sure word of prophecy. Getting into the word of God and obeying what he tells us to do. Number two, number two, number two. After the word, the inward witness. The inward witness. In other words, the inward witness is a prompting. It's a knowing. Sometimes you'd be like, man, this, I, I knew. It's all, sometimes you feel like something told me. You ain't this something. See, now I'll talk to you about the inward voice next, but the inward witness is that, that, yeah, is that prompting, is that leading, is that guiding, that intuition, that knowing that, man, I just, uh, sometimes you come across people, ah, something ain't right. Something ain't right about this situation. I can't put my finger on it because in my head it don't fully make sense, but something, ah, uh, it sounds too good to be true right now. Let me, let me investigate some more. See, that's that prompting. That's that inward witness. That's the primary way that God is going to lead you. See, in, in Romans 7 and 6 in the Amplified, it says this, but, but now we are discharged from the law and have terminated all intercourse with it, having died to what once restrained and held us captive. So now we serve not under obedience to the old code or written regulations, but watch this, but under the obedience to the promptings of the spirit in newness of life, the promptings, the promptings of the spirit. You feel prompted to go do something. That's that inward witness. Don't neglect that. See, a lot of what I hear sometimes, but see, and that's why uh, we were talking. I was like, sometimes people, and, and I myself do it all the time, and I, sometimes I have to work on how I say things. Because sometimes we can say, God said. We hear a lot of that. God told me, God told me, God told me. How you know he told you? You got to judge it. You got to start judging this stuff. Some stuff, people, it ain't God saying it. Sometimes they just thought it. And because they thought it, they want to tag God on it. But you got to know, but see, through time, through fellowship, through relationship, that you begin to learn how God speaks to you and how he begins to, to do things with you. And it's like, man, I, and sometimes that'll protect you from, uh, instead of always saying God said, you know what, sometimes I just felt, I just feel in my heart. This is just something I just feel like, I just feel like I should do. And that helps you when explaining it to other people, because what that, do, that, that does is it helps to protect your name, your integrity and the trust factor of others. Because sometimes, well, I thought God said this. Then I thought God said that. Then I thought you said God said this. Now you're all over the place. And sometimes to protect yourself, this is why you judge those things and says, okay, number one, does this prompting line up with the word? But I got to know the word. See, that's why the word is the first thing, because it's your safeguard. Because even scripture says the spirit and the word agree. So the Holy Spirit ain't leading you and your born again human spirit is not going to lead you to do something that violates scripture. You see what I'm saying? So you got to make sure that what you're saying is God is God. But now this, this primary way, see, it's like this knowing. Um, I'm going to give you this quick example. There was this little boy, this guy who was going on a trip. Um, I, I don't know if he was, I don't think it was a preacher. He wasn't a preacher. He was going on this trip. And this particular morning, the wife got up early to take him to the plane. Um, um, to go on a trip. And so they had this little son. He might have been about maybe five, four years old or something. And um, the boy was asleep, so it was very early in the morning. They pick him up, put him in the car. They drive to the airport. 
Um, it might be a little quick landing strip or whatever. I, I forgot what type of airport it was. It doesn't matter. But they went. While the, the husband got on the plane and began to take off, as the plane began to take off, the little boy wakes up in the car and says, Mama, Mama, where's Daddy? Well, she said, you know, um, Daddy had to go visit such and such and go do such and such. And he shouted out, doesn't he know that plane is getting ready to run into that mountain? And no sooner than he said it out of his mouth, the plane crashed into the side of a mountain and he died. How did the little boy know that? See, with young children, they, they have a sensitivity to the spirit of God that before all of the contamination of the world comes in, they're so sensitive. Why? His spirit was alive to God. How come the husband didn't pick up on it? How come the wife didn't pick up on it? But the little boy did. Sometimes we're so busy, we don't get quiet enough to listen to that inward witness. Be still for a moment. You're so busy working, you're wearing yourself out. And God is saying, I never told you to do that stuff to begin with. Get still first and see. Because some of you, your schedule, ooh, your schedule may lighten up to now create the success. You, you hear me what I'm telling you? Hear me what I'm telling you? He'll tell you to start organizing better and you'll get more accomplished doing less than what you have been doing because he'll start leading you to work in the right areas. Because just because you're busy doesn't mean you're productive and profitable. And you got to stop and be still for a moment. You got to stop and be still. Be still and know. See? I know you're listening to all of these voices that's saying, okay, just because they had to get up at a certain time don't mean you got to get up at the same time. God will lead you for your situation. He'll give you what you need to do what you got to do. And success really is you fulfilling and obeying what God called and told you to do. Some of you are more successful than you realize because you're doing what God's telling you to do. See, your, see your, your level, your idea of success may even need to shift and be adjusted. I know you want to ball out, and yes, prosperity, financial prosperity is a part of that success package, but there are people with money but bad relationships. Got a house and a bed but can't sleep. And they messed up their households chasing something, and it's like, wait a minute, you need to create balance. God may be telling you, you got to slow down. Because you're trying to wear yourself out. And I got another way of doing it for you, but you got to listen to them. I'm going to get ready. I might get ready to stop here and pick back up. I can maybe pick this up on Thursday. I will not keep it too long. <laughs> uh... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I'll give you the points and then maybe I'll go through in more detail on Thursday when I teach it. So the third one is the inward voice. The inward voice. And then number four, Prophecy and gifts of the Spirit. These are ways that God can lead you. But I'm going to go through it in a little more detail and give you the scriptures because the inward voice and the inward witness are two different things. And I'll pick up on Thursday with the inward voice. I'll do that. Because you're going to have to now, and I've given you enough for you to start chewing on that. One thing I begin to learn is Amen. I'm going to give it to you as he gives it to me. And I want you to take this time to say, okay, God, begin to lead God and direct me. Because there are things that won't make sense to your head, but it makes perfect sense to your spirit as you're being led by God and led by his spirit. Because it won't make sense, but it'll make faith. 
things like he'll tell you to start acquiring something that you don't feel like you qualified or ready for. But he says, you ready? You more ready than you realize you are for this. I want to lead you and stretch you into greater. So he says, I want you to pursue this. I want you to go after this. You keep feeling, I feel like, man, it's time, whether it's to move, to, to do something new, to get out your comfort zone. It's like you got to follow that prompting because he's, he's stretching you. The simplest things that God has start telling you to do, and then he'll show you why he's telling you to do it too sometimes. And it's like sometimes you don't see it till later. Sometimes it's like, man, I see why you're saying that. When we talked about the upgrade, when the Spirit of God says start purchasing things, go ahead and upgrade something that you normally like, you know what, I won't do that. Uh, he says, I want to stretch you. Upgrade your living. Because you purchasing that or you going after something will begin to open up something else for you. But it's like, I want you to start changing your thinking so now you can start hearing stuff different. Because when, see, that's why you got to renew your mind. Because if you don't renew your mind and God starts talking, you will talk yourself out of what he said. And we're going to get into this because you're going to start hearing stuff now. You're going to start believing. You're going to start hearing things or you're going to be keenly aware of what you heard. It's like, oh, so that was God telling me to do that. Yep. I was being led, that inward witness, or led by the Spirit to go in this direction. Just go with it. And may the grace of God be with you. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for your people's ears being open to hear. So we take this time to be still, to hear things. And even in this season of our lives, we take time to hear from you as to the way in which we are to go. We bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, if there's somebody under the sound of my voice that you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we want you to get born again. We want you to, listen, it's, it's something about getting born again that transforms and changes your life. The Bible declares this, that as you confess it with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so you got to understand this, that God wants you saved. He wants you born again. He wants his nature to abide in you. He wants his spirit to live in you. And see, when you become born again, it now creates a space for the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit to come in and dwell in and abide in. So there may be somebody out there that's like, you know what? I've never given my life to Jesus, but I want to today. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. I thank you that I'm born again and I have eternal life. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me your son. I'm saved now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want you to say this. Say, Holy Spirit. Come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. Speak to me. Work through me. Show me the path that I'm going to go in for my life. Help me to train myself to hear from you. I open up my heart for your instruction. I open up my heart and my ears for your direction. And now I expect to hear for my life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, welcome to the family of God. If that's you and this is your first time doing that, you've never received Jesus before, but now you did today, we want to acknowledge you. We want to help you grow in your faith. We want you now to send us a message. Let us know. Um, you can send, you can email us. Um, you can send us a message on our social media platform. Our email is connect at spiritoffire.us, connect at spiritoffire.us, or just simply put in the comments section. You can DM us or something to say, hey, I got born again. Where do I go from here? And we're going to help you. We want to help you grow. We want to help you develop. We want to help you increase and learn the things of God. Praise God.
Lastly, but certainly not least, if God is calling you to join and then connect this local fellowship, it's always good to get to a place. I believe every person needs a pastor. You need a place where you're submitted to, where you can receive godly instruction, counsel, wisdom, covering, protection, and family and community where now you can connect with people. And so, listen, we have an e-church uh, platform, whereas if you want to connect with us, with our e-church family, you can do that as well. We have members in other states. We have people, listen, we're believing for members in other countries as well, that we want to help grow and develop you in the things of God and provide um, spiritual you know, content for your enrichment and edification for you to build and to grow and to develop your relationship with the Lord. All right? So if that's you and, and God is leading you to join or connect with this ministry, but you may say, hey, I'm already a part of a ministry, but I want to become a partner with you guys. I like what you're doing. I, I bear witness with the spirit of the ministry and seeing those things. So if that if God is leading you, and it's like women, what does that entail? Well, one of the things for partnership is this. You you promise to pray for us and to help support the work that we're doing, To whether it's viewing the videos, showing up at meetings, maybe in your areas, wherever, um, supporting any work that we're doing um, in the community. You may say, hey, I can do that. I can come. I can, with my resources, my gifts, and things of that nature. Um, you may do that. And it's like, hey, I want to be a partner with this ministry. Listen, go ahead, send us a message. We'll be happy to connect with you to show you what you need to do to get that done. Very simple process, all right? All right, guys, at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. And so there's some information coming up on your screen. We want to worship him in our giving. And so as God has blessed you, and in proportion to what he has given and graced you with, listen, give, whatever it is he's telling you to give. Pray, ask him, what is the amount that you would have for me to sow? And watch what the Spirit of God begins to speak to you to do. He, listen, your present day obedience will determine future provision. Whatever God is telling you to sow, he has a harvest on his mind. And he may know things in the future that you're going to need provision. So he's getting you to get the seed in the ground now so the harvest will be waiting on you when that need shows up. So as you give and as you sow, do it in faith. Do it joyfully and cheerfully and with a loving heart. On the screen, um, there's some information ways for you to give. There's a, a QR code you can scan. It'll take you to a secure page where you can sow. Um, also, other methods and ways are coming up on your screen, whether it's via Cash App, I think Venmo. Uh, you can text, I believe. Um, there's some different ways that are coming up. If you still like to write checks and you want to send the P.O. boxes up there, uh, you can make it out to Spirit of Fire Fellowship or SOFF. That's sufficient. Um, and you can put it in the mail. The, the P.O. box is on your screen. P.O. box 13423, Richmond, Virginia, 23225. And uh, you can sow that way as well. All right, y'all, I'm out of time. Certainly not out of message. I pray God's blessing upon you. I pray his grace upon you. May great favor hit your life and you experience great joy and great peace and great increase in Jesus' name. God bless you all. We love you guys. Happy anniversary once again, Spirit of Fire. 16 years and going, and we're going to grow and we're going to go forth in the earth and do the will of God. God bless you. We love you guys. See you next time. Peace.